Good morning all and a happy new year. It's 2018. It's New Year's Day and uh, I thought you'd like to watch me play with some transistors. So uh, what I've got here is a little tiny breadboard, 9 volt battery and an LED. Of course I'm not going to connect the LED directly to the 9 volt battery because that would kill it. Uh, no, I'm going to connect it through uh, two pins of this little transistor. So let's put that in there and uh, well nothing's happening but if you wait a while that LED gradually comes on which is quite interesting and if I move my hand near the transistor like so and then pull my hand away the transistor sort of conducts and then doesn't conduct and does weird stuff. Now, if you're thinking, well, it's doing those sort of weird things responding to my finger coming closer and moving away because it's a FET. Well, you'd be right. This is a FET. This is a field effect transistor. It's not a MOSFET. It's not even an ECFET. It's not an insulated gate field effect transistor. This is actually a JFET. It's a junction field effect transistor. And the gate, which is on this right hand side, not connected to anything. The gate here is a PN junction. It's P type semiconductor material attached to the gate. And there's some N type semiconductor material um, connecting the, the drain and source together. Now, although it's a PN junction, it's very sensitive to electric fields. This is either induced or capacitively connected or something like that but the transistor turns off when this uh, junction is reverse biased it's completely back to front from a normal transistor now when this pn junction is reverse biased so a negative voltage on the p-type material which is what the gate's connected to uh, very little current can flow through that junction almost none which is why it's so sensitive to electric fields. So let me uh, desensitize it by connecting the gate to the source through a 100K resistor. So that now means that um, there's a, a leakage path uh, away from the gate. So the gate is at the same electrical potential as the source. The source is there in the middle. Drain is up here on the left hand side. And now I can do a couple of things. If I get some voltage, so I'm going to use this one and a half volt battery, and I take the gate negative, so here's the gate, let's take it negative with respect to the source, I can turn the transistor off. So this is a depletion mode transistor with no voltage on the gate. I've got my uh, resistor connecting gate to source. The transistor actually conducts electricity. Um, it's got a moderately high resistance because the LED is not that bright. If I put a negative voltage on the gate, like so, it pinches off the end channel. The channel between uh, drain and source, which is allowing current to flow, if I put a negative voltage on the gate, it pinches it off. Now notice I'm not using any current limiting here. I'm connecting this battery directly between gate and source. And that's because uh, if I reverse bias this PN junction, no current flows. So actually this transistor is responding to just the electric field by having one and a half volts put on the gate. And that pinches the transistor off, turns it off. However, I've also noticed that although this is a depletion mode device, if you connect the gate, and this is a 10K resistor, the gate to a positive voltage, now that will allow current to flow through this PN junction. So I've got to limit that current. That's why I'm using a 10K resistor. But connect that up to this positive voltage up here. Then masses of current flows through that N channel. I'll draw this because it's not obvious what's going on just by looking at this, but I can kind of run this in enhancement mode by taking the gate positive with respect to the source it enhances 
the channel through which current is flowing and far more current flows, still not enough to um, burn the LED out. There's no resistors in here, or certainly no resistor in the path of the LED. I'm simply relying on the resistance of the uh, N-channel semiconductor material in the transistor. But I can enhance it, or um, I need an actual a separate source of voltage for this. I can deplete that channel. I can pinch it off and the transistor turns off. Interesting device. So here's um, a data sheet for the 2N5457. That's the uh, JFET that I'm using. And uh, it's got a very interesting symbol. It's uh, an arrow, which is uh, a PN junction. Here's the N channel. This is N type silicon running between drain and source. And you'll notice it's completely symmetrical the um, the gate arrow comes down into the middle of this end channel and in fact this device is completely symmetrical drain and source are completely interchangeable it's not like the collector and emitter on a bipolar transistor and uh, just to demonstrate that let's take out this 100k resistor so that the uh, gate becomes susceptible to electric fields again and i've got another one of these uh, 2n 5457s, which I've bent the gate connection out. So let's take this one out, put this one in, and as you see, again it's susceptible. But if I leave that, because of leakage, whatever voltage is on that gate, it's probably a negative voltage because it's pinching off the end channel. Because of le leakage, that voltage decays away and the channel uh, conducts. Now, if I turn that round, so drain and source are opposite ways round, it just does exactly the same thing. A negative voltage got induced onto that gate. If we let that drain away, it just conducts through that end channel. Drain and source have no actual real polarity meaning. They're completely interchangeable. Um, in fact, look at this. I've just printed out the uh, data sheet for the J201 uh, JFET. And you can see here it says, note source and drain are interchangeable so it's a symmetrical device so let's just fold um, these over for a moment and I'll just draw effectively what's inside this device so we have a piece of silicon it's doped it's doped to n-type uh, that means that it's doped with um, a donor atom which donates electrons. So pentavalent, that means there are five um, electrons in the outer valence shell. Four of those electrons make bonds with the silicon uh, electrons because silicon has uh, four bond arms. It's all in three dimensions, so it's quite difficult to draw. But you've got a spare electron floating about. So it means, um, now the doping levels are quite low. I was surprised, I've read that um, it's something like one in a hundred million or something one donor atom in a hundred million silicon atoms uh, the donor atom is going to be something like phosphorus which has the uh, five electrons in the outer valence shell so with this uh, spare electron floating about it's free to travel through the lattice and um, it does that of course when you put an electric field across here so across this n type uh, piece of doped silicon We've got terminals, uh, I don't know, this might be the drain, this might be the source, but of course it is, uh, these are interchangeable, it's completely symmetrical. Now these metal legs are bonded onto the ends of the semiconductor material, so you've got um, an interface between metal and semiconductor. And uh, I've been reading about this as well, I got very interested in all this recently, I've spent far too much time on this, really. These junctions, um, if you don't get them right, they can become rectifying because of something called the Schottky barrier. Now, of course, um, Schottky rectifiers are useful things and Schottky diodes are made because they have certain properties which make them useful. But what you want here is not a rectifying junction. You want an ohmic uh, contact between the metal and the semiconductor. And I think one of the methods of doing that is to heavily dope the region around where the contact is placed. I'm not quite sure what the doping level is on these JFETs. I think it might be moderately doped, but it's doped enough to
to allow electrons to travel through the lattice through the um, atomic structure and so a, a, an electron path is formed. Now on here we've got a couple of p-type regions and they're actually connected together and this is the gate. So there's it's kind of a piece of wire running around the back connecting both sides together. When you put, um, so I should put a P there if I can fit that in. When you put P-type uh, semiconductor, now P-type is made by using acceptor atoms, so trivalent, three electrons in the outer valence shell, which means there's a missing electron, which means you've got a hole, and holes can conduct electricity um, in a different way, but they can conduct electricity as well as electrons, spare electrons, can conduct electricity. So N-type doped silicon conducts, P-type doped silicon conducts. However, when you put P-type doped silicon next to N-type, you get a depletion region. And in the JFET, it looks a bit like this. It's two sort of bits of depletion region punching in, but not meeting in the middle. So there's still a channel for electrons to throw, uh, to flow through here even though you've got these depletion regions. These depletion regions are where electrons, the spare electrons from the N-type, jump into the spare holes, recombine with the holes in the P-type, and the whole thing becomes stable, electrically neutral, and it becomes an insulator. This region here, and it probably extends beyond there, so you've got this insulating area here, depleted region, which doesn't conduct but there is still a channel through the middle which does conduct. Now, if you put an electric potential across a PN junction, uh, if you forward bias it, so you would put a more positive on the P region, like a, the, like a NPN transistor, you can get this uh, region to shrink. So these two regions will shrink away. And that's what was happening when I was um, connecting the gate up to a higher voltage. These regions were shrinking back and actually uh, providing a wider path through which more current can flow through this device. If you reverse bias the PN junction and you do that by putting a negative voltage on the P region, these depletion regions actually grow and they will grow to a point where they touch in the middle and completely block off this N channel. So if I induce a positive voltage, it's quite hard to do because as soon as you get a positive voltage on this P junction, the gate which is on this right hand side, of course the junction starts to conduct. So a positive voltage can't survive on there for very long, but I can just for very brief moments slightly enhance that N channel. But it's very easy to get a negative uh, potential sitting on that gate because now that the, the junction is reverse biased, it's a very, very high resistance, multi megohms probably. That does leak away very slowly and the N channel starts to conduct again. But like I showed, and in fact, I can probably do it with the 100K resistor. If I take the gate more positive and hold it there, we get a really bright LED. I fixed the camera's exposure for this video because I didn't want it responding to the change in light level. If I take it more negative, and the only way I can take it more negative than the negative of this battery is to introduce another battery. Take the gate more negative, I've got to wait for it to turn on of course. Then I can pinch off that channel and tell the transistor don't conduct at all. Now I bought three types of JFETs. I bought some 2N5457. Um, I also bought some J201s and also bought some J112s uh, because I thought they might be all slightly different. One thing I've noticed about the J201, uh, which is here, if I take out the 2N5457 and put a J201 in there, um, it has extremely low leakage from the gate through to the source or the drain, well, through into that N channel, uh, this thing here, very low leakage 
across this PN junction between the P-type gate and this N-type channel. And so actually I've sat here waiting for ages and this hasn't come on because that negative potential on the gate, which is there, you can see it's there because I can, let's see if I can influence it. Not at the moment. If I get very close to it, I can influence it. Uh, the negative potential that's sitting across that junction just sits there pretty much indefinitely. If I bring in the 100K resistor to connect gate and source together again, thus removing that negative potential. Now the gate is at, through that 100K resistor, through the same potential as the source. You can see it does the same thing as the 2N5457. It allows current to flow. Not fully open that channel. Again, if I use this 10K resistor, I can fully open that channel, gate to the high voltage. And we get a brighter LED. Not so much difference on this one, actually. That that was a bigger difference on the uh, 205457, but that does enhance it a bit. And of course, I can deplete that N channel in the same way. Uh, let's move my resistor out of the way. Put positive to source, bring the gate negative with respect to source, and I can pinch that channel off. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. It doesn't pinch off with one and a half volts completely. So yeah, the J201 does behave a little bit differently to the 2N5457. That hasn't switched off uh, completely. That LED is still glowing a little bit. Right, let's try the J112 because I've not tried that one yet. So this one I haven't seen the results of. Let's poke that in there. Oh, wow. Now that has, I can deplete that away by putting a charge on that gate, a negative charge. Is that going to leak? Yes, that one does have more leakage. And that one does seem to go a lot brighter than the other two. So this one must have a much or slightly wider channel, which is allowing more electron flow through that N-type silicon. I'm sure I can pinch this one off in the same way. Let's uh, put positive to source and negative to gate. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe this requires a higher voltage than my 1.5 volts. I'll have to look at the data sheet. Uh, right, here's the J112 uh, JFET, and it says here for the gate source cutoff voltage, uh, minimum is minus one volt, and I've only got uh, 1.2 volts with this battery, but the maximum is minus five volts, and they do apparently vary quite wildly between devices. So I might find another one that uh, did cut off a bit at 1.2 volts, but uh, certainly this one, and that's actually getting quite warm now because there's quite a lot of current flowing through that N-channel uh, semiconductor material. Uh, this one doesn't cut off at 1.2 volts. Let me see if I can find one that does. Uh, no, I've been through a few of these and uh, they all seem to be behaving roughly the same. So certainly this seems to have a wider channel for current to flow. But uh, by the same token, it takes more voltage to pinch that channel to, to widen the depletion regions and pinch that channel off to stop current flowing from my 9 volt battery to this LED. So yes, these are strange and interesting devices. These JFETs with their electric field sensitivity. And uh, I will come back to playing with these devices uh, in a little while when I've done some more experiments. Apparently they make very good current sources. But uh, anyway, for the moment, that's it. Cheerio.